Hi, friends. It's Mr. Rogers here, and um, I am going to go through who I am here. And this is actually one of my favorite things to go through. Um, it's actually an AP assignment, AP bio assignment, but I, I turned it this year to a bio assignment because I think it does a good job of going over things and 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 really challenging students to think. And uh, I hope it went well. And if it didn't, well, then we know we got to do some things for macromolecules, but don't get too down on yourself because, like I said, I'm asking you to do a lot of critical thinking here. So everything that's on one of these, there's 12 of them. Each one is a macromolecule. They're either carbohydrate, protein, lipid, or nucleic acid. Each one, you go through the first time, you went through the first time, and hopefully you guessed um, on what you think it is by just the structure. And then um, the second time through, added some clues uh, based on some of the things we learned about each macromolecule. And I'm going to go through how you would have figured out by just the structure, and then I would have helped you with the clues the second time through. Okay, So this might take a couple minutes, but it'll be, it'll be worth it, I promise. So <clears throat> this first guy, who am I? So we're looking at the structure here. One of the first things that pop out to me is that it has a phosphate group, and it has nitrogens. And also, it looks like there's very three distinct parts. And in class, we learned that this item, this thing that we're looking at, has three distinct parts. And it has a, a phosphate group, it has a sugar, and it has a nucleotide. This is a nucleic acid, or this is technically one of the nucleotides that make up a nucleic acid. This is actually the A nucleotide, or uh, adenine, if you wanted to know. And so by the structure, how I figured that out, again, there's a phosphate and nitrogen, and there's three distinct parts, three very distinct parts here. And that was probably one of the harder ones. So don't feel bad if you didn't get that one. Uh, this guy. Oh, no. I'm using the wrong one. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Let me go. Sorry. I'm not going to restart. We're just going to go on. Two. Uh, who am I here? So... Looking here, I can see that I have oxygens and an oxygen here. And then I have a bunch of carbons here. These, when points meet together, that means that they're carbons. And we also assume that they have the max amount of hydrogens that are allowed. So like this carbon right here has two bonds, so it's gonna have two hydrogens come off. This carbon right here has one, two, three, four bonds to it, so it has no hydrogens. But that doesn't really matter. Right here, we see there's a lot of carbons, not a lot of oxygens. We also see that there's four distinct rings. There's four distinct rings. This is a steroid. This is a steroid, which means it's a lipid. So the macromolecule is lipid, and we can figure out that it's a steroid from there. So we can keep even get more detailed. Yeah, the more detailed, the better. Number three, uh, you can see here that we have these nitrogens here, R's. We briefly maybe talked about R groups um, in our notes, but we're going to just, that's more of a concept for later on in biology. But we have these nitrogens here, and we can kind of see that it repeats. This one's kind of hard to tell without getting more details, but this is going to be a protein. I mean, the big thing is it has nitrogen. Um, and so, and it, it, when we look at uh, an amino acid, when we go through amino acids later in this class further and deeper, we're going to find out every amino acid has something called an amino group, which is an NH, or NH3, and a carboxyl group, which is a C double bonded to an O. So that's a little advanced, but I, I want to leave this one in, and the, 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 uh, the hints in round two will help out, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, this guy. So we're looking here again at um, some structures, skeletal structures. So they don't have all the carbons in here. We have to picture the carbons in there. You can kind of see that there's a lot of oxygens. Um, it kind of looks like it's a repeating thing, and it is a repeating thing. It's actually glucose is connected together. And this is a starch here. Now, you would never guess it was a starch or off of just looking at the picture, but you can guess that the macromolecule here is carbohydrate. So the true answer is carbohydrate. If you want to get more detailed, it is starch. So this is a polysaccharide or a polymer, 
Each one of these is a monomer here. Number five, uh, these are called um, chair formations. And again, this is a skeletal structure, so we assume that there's carbons at each one of these points that don't have anything. Um, this is something that we draw in something called organic chemistry. Um, and we do a lot of these drawings. You'll take organic chemistry in college, if you go to college. Um, most people do um, nowadays. It's kind of almost a required class, especially if you go into the medical field or science field. Um, and in organic chemistry, you basically learn how these molecules make sense um, using biology and chemistry. So, anywho, looking here, uh, these seated formations are trying to make this object look like it's 3D. So if it's a thicker line, it's coming out of the screen. If it's a thinner line, it's going into the screen. So that gives you an idea. Also, it's saying that nothing is a straight line in organic chemistry. Um, nothing's flat, so it's going to go up, down, up, down, that type of thing. Anyways, uh, so we have a bunch of oxygens, same number of carbons. That right there should tell you that it's carbohydrate. Um, this is actually uh, lactose. Um, so this is something that you guys can't break down in your stomachs if you don't have lactase. Some of you guys don't do well with lactose. Some of you guys do. just kind of depends on your genetics. Uh, but this is a carbohydrate. Six. So again, another skeletal structure here. We have a bunch of carbons and very few oxygens. So this is a lipid here. It's a lipid. We'll tell you what lipid it is when we get to the next part. Seven. Again, a lot of carbons. A lot of carbons. A lot of carbons. Even a couple double bonds here. That will help us kind of figure out what this is later. Some oxygens, not a ton. I think it's six. But there's a lot of carbons here. We're talking about upwards of 40, 50 carbons. This is going to be a lipid. And it's going to be a... Uh, unsaturated lipid, unsaturated fat because of these double bonds. Um, this right here, I believe, is palm oil, if I remember right. So, pretty cool. This guy, uh, we have a bunch of these little tiny guys connected together. And in each one of these, they show the picture up close of these guys. And we can see that it's a... Nitrogen, we have a nitrogen group, we have an R group, and so therefore these are actually going to be representing amino acids, and so this is going to be a protein. It's going to be a protein. Now, with all the proteins, we can't get any more in depth because it's such a closed-in picture of what the protein is. I can't tell you what the protein's job is in the cell. We just have to recognize that these are amino acids. All right, here um uh, fortunately there's not a skeletal structure here they tell us all the carbons if you want to count all the carbons you're more than welcome to and again there's six oxygens and you might start seeing like a trend here a lot of these fats this little lipid have three arms coming off or maybe two if it's a phospholipid um but we have a lot of carbons and very through few oxygens this is going to be very nonpolar. um has a double bond here meaning it's uh unsaturated this is olive oil so Olive oil is a liquid at room temperature, um, but just barely because it only has one kink, one uh, unsaturated bond here, double bond. The rest are pretty saturated. All right, getting on to the next one. Here we have phosphates. Um, that kind of helps us out to figure out what this is. Also, we can kind of see that, again, it looks like... Um, there's repeating things, so we're going to just look at one. We're going to assume that this is a bunch of monomers connected together, which is correct. Um, you can see that there's one, two, three distinct parts to each monomer. So this is an acrylic acid. This is actually RNA, you wanted to know. Um, each one of these different uh, nucleotides, each one is different. Each one gives a different um, code to make something, just so we know. Talk about that later in the class. 11 here. This one is a little trickier. Um, this one, uh, we don't go in this in depth in regular bio, but I want to leave it. And so here we have a code of different things. Um, each one of these represents a different monomer. And then it gets more and more complex as we go along and becomes almost a ribbon structure. We kind of looked at some of these ribbon structures in class. 
but I just wanted to make sure that um, this one's a little bit harder. This is going to be a protein, okay? And there's no, like, tricks here, or, like, oh, there's a nitrogen and stuff, because it kind of takes it all out. This is more just referencing the structure of a protein, that it's really just folds and turns and uh, as you get more and more zoomed out. And then 12 here, we have a structure of carbons, a lot of carbons, not that many oxygens. I mean, more oxygens than usual. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's pretty awesome. But there's a lot more carbons. So it's not a carbohydrate for sure. It's not a protein because there's no nitrogens. There is a phosphate. So that means we can lean towards nucleic acids. But what really gives us away is the fact that it has a huge, huge, huge nonpolar thing and we talked about this guy this is a um an example of something that doesn't really quite fit into lipids but is a lipid this is a lipid this is a phospholipid the phospho being the phosphate up here we're going to talk a lot about phospholipids in the next couple of weeks here this is polar up here this loves water look at all these oxygens but this is very nonpolar down here very nonpolar and this plays a huge role in your cells and we'll talk about how so we're restarting here. Obviously, each one of these now has a little bit more information. Um, you can kind of go through and figure out like what these mean for each one. Obviously, this guy, pass on traits, next generation. So obviously, I'm trying to point you to nucleic acids. And then I made up with three parts, nucleotide, phosphate, sugar. Hopefully, you recognize nucleotide as the monomer, and that's three distinct parts. Oh, number two is a steroid. Um, they have a bunch of carbons, very low oxygens that can be used as signals in organisms and humans. So this is a, uh, steroids are used a lot as hormones. Um, the most famously in humans is testosterone and estrogen. That's what makes you a guy or a girl. Next one, I contain nitrogen. I can become almost anything in the cell. This is kind of trying to point you towards a protein. My friends call me a polysaccharide. If we remember, saccharide means sugar. Poly, so you know that's probably carbohydrate. I'm found in Mr. Potato Head. I'm trying to get you to think down to starch. We talked about in carbohydrates that starch is found in potatoes. I have the same amount of oxygens as carbons. Again, trying to get you to think about this as carbohydrate. They put me on cars because I hate water. Obviously, we are lipid here, but I'm trying to hopefully you can pinpoint a little bit further down. What do we put on cars because they hate water, and that's wax. Now, what's ironic here. It's technically why wax is so effective is these oxygens here, they love the metal of the uh, car and they'll connect. And then these guys will lay flat and stick out and water can't connect to the metal because the water likes metal too. So this guy kind of is slightly polar here, which is just enough of a magnet to stick to the car. But then this guy keeps the water off. Uh, each point where two lines meet, I have a carbon hydrogen. Sometimes I have double bonds. So this is unsaturated uh, fat, which is a lipid. Here I have uh, made up of 20 different kinds of monomers called amino acids. So that kind of helps you point towards protein. So many carbons, so few oxygens. I'm liquid at room temperature. This is unsaturated fat again, um, which is a lipid. I contain phosphate. I also, again, have three parts. This is a nucleic acid. I am just a simple code of 20 monomers, but I keep folding and folding. I keep getting more complex with more folds. I end up making almost everything in a cell. This is protein. And the last but not least, I am a phosphate that makes me unique and polar up top. However, the rest of me is super nonpolar. Mr. Rogers calls me jellyfish. Fish. This is a phospholipid or a lipid in general. I hope this went well. I hope this kind of... I, I do this because I really want you guys to get good at looking at structures because that's something you can take out of this class uh, into life is you can actually look at molecular structures and think to yourself, okay, what is going on here? Like, is this is this a polar thing or nonpolar thing? Is this a bunch of carbons or is there a lot of oxygens? What is going on? And you can learn a lot through just understanding the basics of molecules. You can basically muddle your way through a lot of classes by just knowing what molecules are. Uh, when I look at a molecule because of my training as a like um, a pharmacist and what I've done, I can kind of figure out, okay. That molecule is going to be dangerous for this reason or it's going to be helpful for this reason. And that's that's an interesting background to have. So I hope it went well. If it didn't, you can always come get help from me. Um, 
this is a little more challenging of an exercise. That's why, you know, I'm not going to grade it or anything, but I just wanted you guys to try. All right, guys. Thank you.